So we've seen the stars bounce around the HR diagram. They usually end up at some red giant phase with a dense core, but this tenuous outer region that often gets blown away. But where do they actually end up? They talked about the sun, yep. and it ends up blowing away about half of its mass. Um, the other half stays as a white dwarf in the middle, which is so hot it I might, very briefly, this is only for like a few tens of thousands of years, so a blink of a cosmological scale, and then end up with a white dwarf that cools off forever. Forever. Is, is that what always happens to white dwarfs? They just settle down into boring old age? It depends. It depends because, as we talked about quite earlier, it depends whether they're a single star or a binary star. Now, as we talked about, there's lots of stars that are binary or sometimes even trinary or whatever. And if, in a lot of cases, if you have stars born from the same molecular cloud, because they're in the same system, same composition, and similar mass, they're going to follow this evolutionary track at a somewhat similar rate. And in some cases, you can actually end up with two white dwarfs in the same system. Yeah, so let's imagine you had a, a sun-mass star and a slightly less than sun-mass star. Yeah, imagine Jupiter was actually a star in this case. Let's make a bit, 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 bit more balanced. Yep. Um, so let's say one solar mass and 0.9 solar mass. Right. So the one solar mass star will die first because it's more massive and it yep. will turn, blow a lot of gas out and turn into a white dwarf. Yep. So now you've got a white dwarf orbiting the second star, which is a bit lower mass. Yep. But the second star now swells up and becomes a red giant. And if the, if the binary are close, now some binaries are a long way yep. apart, but some binaries are very close. That means some of the gas from the second star, the lower mass one, is going to land on the, the least massive one. Exactly. Massive one. It's going to accrete on that small, smaller, now white dwarf, and it's going to keep gobbling this up as much as it can. But it really can't do it all the time. There are limits to how much material a white dwarf can create. Yes, one thing that can happen is that you can get a layer of like helium snow being deposited from the neighbor on the surface of a carbon oxygen white dwarf. Yep. And that white dwarfs have incredibly strong gravity. So as this layer gets thicker and thicker, it can eventually get thick enough that it can all nuclear fuse in a sudden explosion. Yep. And that's called a classical nova. That's right. So you get a big explosion. But there are even worse things that can happen, right? This is your speciality. <laughs> that's right. If you actually create too much material, you get these layers and you reach a certain limit, a limit we've talked about before, the Sean take our limit, you cannot support this degenerate energy, this degenerate pressure anymore. This white dwarf really wants to steal it, but the, the atoms or the neutrons now inside the white dwarf don't allow this to happen. It physically becomes unstable. Okay, so the white dwarf's held up by the electron degeneracy yes. pressure, so the electron's moving really fast, but again, the speed of light limit means that if, for example, the two white dwarfs collide, or you dump enough mass from one star onto the white dwarf, now it can start the whole thing collapsing. And what's going to happen then? Because you've got carbon, oxygen, that can still fuse, can't it? It can still fuse, and it can keep do going down that periodic table of elements. It can start fusing, and we can actually fuse all the way to iron. But we've, we've talked about before, we can't really fuse past iron, can we? So... It's got a lot of energy, right? It has a lot of energy. There's a lot of mass. And that's, in fact, called a thermonuclear thermonucleus. supernova. So there's this picture here, the blast wave from one of these. Exactly. So in fact, the white dwarf doesn't end up being the final state. The explosion ends up being final state, and the white dwarf is now no more. Now, the other star can sometimes survive this process. If you have a red giant, it will survive the explosion of the white dwarf, but it's gonna it's not going to come out great, but it's still going to be there. It's still going to be a star. It's going to be a very weird-looking star. Now, do we know whether this happens? Uh, is it because gas from the red uh, giant is landing on the white dwarf, or is it because two white dwarfs actually merge? Last time I remember, there was a controversy between these two. What's the latest on so this? So there was a controversy, and now the controversy is they both can do it. Right. And this has become the complicated scenario. We now have detected clearly that not only a red giant can do it, but there's also other stars that could happen as well. You can actually get a main sequence star or a subgiant. So before you kick into that red giant phase, if the star is close enough and if this white dwarf was much bigger and so evolved much faster than the other white dwarf, it too can steal that material from this other star and explode. Okay, so we've seen sun-like stars. If they're all by themselves, they settle down to old age as a white dwarf, the brief planetary nebula around it. But if they're binaries, and remember that most stars yes. are binaries, if they're a far away binary, like Alpha and Beta Centauri, 30 right. astronomical units apart, they're not going to affect each other. But if they're a close binary, which a lot of them are, yes. then something nasty is going to happen. That's right. And, and, and several it, nasty things. That's right. And it depends on its size, 
as you said, how fast it goes through these phases, how far away it is, and a bit of its composition as well. So that's a sun-like star. But if we go more massive, um, white dwarfs can only go up to about you know, one and a half times the mass of the sun. Uh, because any bigger than that, they hit the Chandrasekhar limit, even without anything being dumped on the surface. Yep. So that might mean a star that's up to like five solar masses to begin with might lose half its mass in the red giant phase, leaving you know, maybe a one and a half. Yep. Solar. But if you're talking about like a seven or eight solar mass star to begin with, that's going to produce a white that will produce a white dwarf that's just too massive. Exactly. So that's not going to happen. No, that's So what right. happens when a, you know, like a ten solar mass star comes to the end of its life? It's not going to form a white dwarf. No, it's not. And if we were looking, if you remember back previously when we saw some of these bigger stars kind of just shoot off and almost disappear, well, they kind of do. You actually get this ultimately this huge battle. It's this battle royale between now surviving the core, surviving the pressure inward and it propping it still stuff up. You're still creating nuclear fusion, but can you create enough nuclear fusion to prop up all of this extra weight that is now burning on these near shells of this star? Yes, yeah, so this star's gonna have a lot of shells. Yep. So it's, it's, um, you might went, well end up with a iron core yep. because you can't burn anything past iron as we talked about with numerous shells burning around it. But eventually there's just not enough radiation to hold up that That's immense right. weight. I mean, this is, it's a lot of baggage. Yes, now these are gonna blow a lot of gas off before they explode as well. Yes. All stars seem to go through this flatulent super, red, super giant phase yep. um, but now it's all going to start collapsing and, coll and it collapses very quickly so all the mass starts falling in towards the middle now normally if that happens you get a white dwarf that formed in the middle and that would just stop things but here that can't be the case because by the time the white dwarfs formed it's already so massive the electrons are moving at the speed of light so it just keeps on shrinking and it can't do thermonuclear yep. explosion because it's already made of iron and it can't get any more iron once any energy it. once you've burned everything to iron so it just keeps on shrinking and shrinking the electrons can't hold it up but what does hold it up is neutrons yes. so neutrons are more massive so it takes longer time for them to speed up but eventually you'll get to the stage where the, yes. it behaves like a giant atomic instead of like behaving like a giant atom which is a white dwarf it behaves like a giant atomic nucleus which is called a neutron star and it's so dense that you as he said you can't get those neutrons to move create that energy anymore and you reach a physical limit to where the, even these neutrons to keep doing this so now you've actually created a new thing Yes, so the really massive stars will come to a black, a black hole. We'll talk about that. Yep. But first of all, let's talk about the explosion we get when we have to So once things. you've created this neutron star, well, where does this energy out? You still have this pressure coming in. Well, and you've got a lot of gravitational energy, right? Yes, yeah, I mean, talked it's about lot. shrinking, and now we've, the neutron star is like only a kilometre across. Yeah, so you're talking about something that is eight times bigger than the sun to something less than a city. So you have an absolutely staggering amount of energy, gravitational energy now, not thermonuclear yeah. energy, gravitational energy. Now you've spent, you've spent millions of years producing all these heavy elements in the core, and they all get destroyed, don't they? That's right, this gravitational energy essentially is released, and this triggers a shock wave that travels through the star and essentially igniting it, and it's kind of actually like a nuclear bomb, if you imagine, because lo and behold, they are nuclear bombs. Yeah, but it's not. It's part by That's gravity. Right. Yep. So in some sense, you can think of everything collapses down. You suddenly get this ball of neutrons in the middle, and things bounce off it. That's right. You also got a wave of neutrinos coming out from when these neutrons are uh, neut neutrons are produced. And ne normally, neutrinos just go through everything without noticing. But we're talking how many neutrinos? One of these things? Oh, I mean, so <laughs> well, we we know from one in particular in 1987a, we detected 24 neutrinos on Earth from an explosion. Now, this was in the Large Magellanic Cloud, so this was in our neighboring galaxy, but it was one of these massive stars we blew up and we detected those neutrinos from a distant galaxy on Earth. So you get this massive gravity-powered explosion. All the heavy elements the star has taken millions of years to produce are destroyed, but then things bounce out, yep. the wave of neutrinos blows the whole thing out, and you get this enormous blast wave coming out, and in this blast wave, heavy elements are created again. That's right, so this blast wave is now triggered, and this blast wave quite literally lasts seconds to minutes. This isn't another, hey, it takes 10,000 or a million years. It's like that helium flash. It travels through the star. So this is now called not a thermonuclear supernova, but a core, core. collapse That's supernova. Right. Because so the powered core by gravity. And that core so it's actually a quite different thing from the uh, thermonuclear supernova. The energy source is different. That's coming from relatively low mass white dwarf. This is coming from a much higher mass. That's coming from nuclear fusion. This is coming from gravity. And not surprisingly, when we look at these leftover objects, what we see is the elements are present. They look different as well. The actual resulting explosions look different from each other because, as you said, the physical mechanisms 
and what was present is different. And then finally, we get on to the really massive stars, even a neutron star. Now, neutrons, because they're 1,800 times more massive than an electron, they, they can be compressed roughly 1,800 yep. times more before they start hitting the speed of light. But eventually, even in a neutron star, they'll start hitting the speed of light and they can't fight off the pressure. So you have a really massive star. What sort of masses are we talking about here? So we could talk anywhere between 30 and some people believe upwards of even 100 masses. So these ones, they can't produce a white dwarf because the, by the time they collapse, the electrons will be going the speed right. of light. They can't even produce a neutron star because the neutrons will be going the speed of light. So is there anything going to stop them collapsing? Well, as it turns out, kind of the answer is no. They actually just keep collapsing. They keep collapsing and they keep collapsing and they keep collapsing until you're really now breaking, you're now exceeding the nuclear force that has really been propping this up. Now, everything in terms of force, the only thing that is the strongest now is a gravitational force. So these things will keep on shrinking until they are zero size. That's right. A singularity, a point with still the mass. I mean, let's say it started off as a 50 solar yep. mass star. It will have lost maybe 30 of those solar masses being blown out in its red giant phase. But it's still leaving 20 solar That's masses still or something. That's a lot of stuff. In zero size, smaller than the head of a pin, zero size. Nothing can stop it shrinking. Yeah, we're, we're not talking about a kilometer like a neutron star or half the, you know, or, you know, half the size of our sun. We're literally talking about a singular point, and you've squeezed all of that mass into a singular point. Now, we talk about there being a radius for this, and that's called the Schwarzschild radius. Now, the actual mass is zero size, yeah. but there's a, a region around it where the gravity is so strong that not even light can escape. And this is called the Schwarzschild radius, or the event horizon. Yep. Some of people talk about the black holes having a size, uh, but it's not the size of the mass. The mass is zero right. size. It's this shell around it where nothing can ever return, because nothing can go faster than light. That's right. So that's the end of different types of stars. Now we've covered this rather quickly because in another course we spent very much more time talking about all these things, but we thought having spent so long talking about stars we should finish the story. You need the resolution to the end because as we've talked about before, when these explosions happen or, or when these nebulae are created, they eventually come back to turn new molecular clouds which turn into new stars and the process repeats.